Uh, welcome. Hi, my name is Chris Hines, and I'm a deputy superintendent in Conroe Independent School District, and I'm uh, facilitating this process of attendance boundaries. And uh, with me tonight, I want to introduce our panelists and uh, who will be working with me. First is Mr. Chris McCord, our executive director of operations, and he's co-facilitating. Also with me, uh, Dr. Debbie Phillips, our assistant superintendent for elementary schools. Uh, also on the call, Mr. Rod Chavez, our uh, director of community outreach. And also is uh, Sarah Blakelock, our director of communications. And uh, not, not last and least, but certainly the most important, Jessica Villarreal, my assistant. So she's on the call with us today. And we're going to get started here in a minute. I'm going to switch over to sharing my screen. But before we get going, I do want to point out we have a question and answer feature. So um, there is a, an area at the bottom there where you should be able to type in a question if you'd like. And we'll try to make sure we answer them. I've received some questions already in advance. So I know I've tried to add them in to the presentation. We're going to, you know, our goal tonight is to try to cover a lot of information, but not keep you too long. Uh, so we'll keep it moving. If we don't get to all of our questions tonight, we'll try to be sure to put them up um, on the web page. So um, I'm going to try to switch over uh, to my sharing of the screen. So hopefully you're seeing the right screen. Um, and again, this is our uh, make sure you're in the right place. This is a presentation about the zoning process for Reuben Hope Junior Elementary School, which is going to open um, next school year. So we're going to just kind of get into the presentation a little bit. So we will be opening a new a school for about 950 elementary students. It's going to open in August of 2021, a year from now. And it's going to su serve students in grades. And we anticipate pre-K through four. Uh, and it's going to be located at 14755 Granger Pines. And that is in the new Granger Pines development that's going in over off uh, 3083. Um, so here's a rendering kind of of the front of our uh, future campus. This is where it's located on a map, if you're trying to get people oriented a little bit. Um, this is the Grangerland Milam complex. This is Caney Creek back here, high school. And then if you were going down, this is 3083. Um, and so this 2090 running across, and then you can see um, this is the neighborhood. And that's, uh, that's where we're gonna be on the neighborhood try to give you a view. So coming back off of 3083, this is the school. You cannot miss it. It's under construction right now. So we're going to plan to open that school. There's a view from the sky. It's going to be a beautiful campus. So why is it necessary for us to, to redo the boundaries? And this happens um, pretty frequently. We're a fast growing district, so, uh, but it has been a while since we've had to rezone in the Caney Creek feeder for an elementary school. But, but the number one reason we do this is because of student growth and building new schools. And that's why we're doing it this time. Uh, there are other times where we've seen shifts in population over time, or we've seen uh, an area grow or have a renewal or resurgence in population. And we've also seen some communities age over time and we've lost enrollment. So we might redraw boundaries to try to take advantage of our existing space. So as we begin this process, we, we're gonna focus on the Caney Creek Elementary feeder. Um, you know, when, as we look at our schools that are there, Austin Elementary has a capacity of roughly 900 students and it ended last year. And, and I wanna say this, that we, we probably have not reached the enrollment at our elementary level that we finished last year. So right now we're gonna to refer to the end of the year. Last year is probably our best look. We think there's some pre-K and kinder and first grade students, uh, particularly that may have uh, delayed starting this year. So um, we are a little bit under our projections in those, on those grade levels. So our more accurate numbers, we're gonna to refer to how we ended the year. And Austin ended the year at roughly 900 uh, students with a, a capacity of 900 and uh, about 966 students in 10 portable, 11 portable classrooms. And by 2028, we're projecting over 1500 students for Austin. So we know there's fast growth coming in the next few years and we wanna be ready for that. And we're already overcrowded. So we would like to reduce the uh, number of students on that campus and reduce our dependency on those portable classrooms. Same thing for Creighton, it, it too is full. It is a smaller school with a capacity of about 675 students. And that ended the year with an enrollment of over 800 students and 
in 10 portable classrooms. And so by, by 2028, we're projecting an enrollment of over a thousand. So we're gonna be looking at Creighton and how we can reduce some numbers at Creighton through this process. In addition, uh, San Jacinto Elementary School, which concluded last year with about 620 students, has a capacity of roughly 750 students. And, that's, and these are rough estimates on capacities. We know capacity is based on maximum utilization. Sometimes special programs actually change the real capacity of a building. So, um, you know, a, a special program might have fewer students in it and it takes a classroom. And so we actually have less than what we think in terms of full capacity. Um, also, you know, really want to stress that um, we did lose some capacity when we uh, made the jump to full day pre-K. So where we used to have two classes in one room, now we have one class in a classroom all day. But San Jacinto is projected to be at almost 1,300 students by 2028. So we know we have some growth coming. Uh, Patterson Elementary, which we are including in this discussion because Patterson uh, adjoins right up to uh, the boundary of Austin and, and Milam. And so um, we always, whenever we have schools that are right on the boundary, we tend to invite them and include them in this process. We may or may not impact their boundaries, but we certainly uh, are going to include them and, and it's going to be something that we're going to look at. But Patterson's at capacity currently uh, with enrollment of 945 students. Um, and so that is some, another uh, school that we'll keep in mind as we go through this process. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll look at the map and um, take a sip of water here. This is the map of the Caney Creek feeder. <clears throat> and I've got to highlight, this is where Austin Elementary is located. And um, this is the Patterson and Bosman complex. And if we come down, uh, this is Creighton. <clears throat> and this is the complex where we have Grangerland, Milam, Moorhead, and Caney Creek. And then uh, this is also where we have the new school coming in in San Jacinto uh, further to the south. So this just gives you an idea of our current boundaries, where the location of our current schools. This, are, this is a map showing our high growth areas. And again, you can kind of see we have all, all parts of the eastern portion of our school district and the Caney Creek feeder uh, are really gonna be um, having some growth areas and you can kind of see they're highlighted with kind of the lines. We have um, several areas that have planned developments that are coming in or going on right now. We won't spend a lot of time going into those developments, but we just want to make sure we, we point it out that we are planning for the future. During this process, <clears throat> you're going to hear us talk about geocoded and actual enrollment. And geocoded is the number of students that actually live within a unit or a boundary zone. So um, the, the two are not going to add up. And so I don't want to confuse people when we give you numbers that you say, well, wait a second, you said there's this many students, but, but there's only this many on the geocode. And geocode is actual numbers of who lives there. Enrollments change because maybe we have transfers. We have teachers that might bring their children to a school. We might have a special program in which students from other schools come to that school to take advantage of that program. So there's an actual enrollment and it's not the same as geocoded. For the sake of planning, we look at geocoded. So um, you'll understand that there's gonna be some discrepancies in those numbers. And here's an example of um, geocoded and, and current. So, you know, at the end of uh, last year, Austin at 979 students, and from a geocoded standpoint, there was 898. So you can see there was roughly 80 students uh, in addition that did not live within those boundaries that went to the school. And a lot of those are probably staff members, but some of them may be um, program related. So I just wanna share that. And that's, there's always gonna be a little bit of a discrepancy as we work through this process. Um, and so when we come up with a number and it seems smaller, know that there's gonna be some additional students that come in. So here's a quick summary of the schools that we're including in the discussion. Uh, we are not rezoning uh, intermediate in this process, but we're gonna be thinking about intermediate schools because we're gonna open one in the future. And, but we are looking at this elementary school in a K-4 um, scenario. And so we're looking at who's gonna, who's gonna shift around to uh, make the boundaries and make up the, the attendance of the new school. 
And this gives you kind of a quick summary, Austin, which is has a new building, 2019 building. The original was built in 52. I wanted to make a note of that. Um, and it has a capacity of 900. We have 11 portables. And you can see where we look uh, 2028 to have 1,551 students. And then Creighton, which is a 1980 uh, building, has a capacity of 675. We have 10 portables on site and, um, and project to be over 1,000 by 2028. San Jacinto Elementary, which is also a 1980 uh, model, has a capacity of 750 and is projected to be um, almost double the capacity uh, or double that enrollment um, in the, in, by 28. Patterson, which is a, open in 2014, has a capacity of 928 and is sitting right at capacity right now. Um, and they have two portable classrooms. And then Grangerland, we know is, is over capacity of 10 portables. Um, with a capacity of 1,100, and they're projected to be at 739. We do, we do anticipate op opening an intermediate in 2023, so uh, we know they'll get relief before then. And then Bosman Elementary uh, is going to grow and, and get up to 1,102 students by 2028. I will say this about projections. Sometimes they happen faster than we expect. Sometimes they happen slower than we expect by a year or two or three, but, but they generally uh, come to fruition. So we, we do want to include them and we do take them seriously and we try to gauge them, but we do know that there's, um, there can be economic factors. Uh, obviously, we talked about the pandemic and the impact on our current enrollment, especially in the lower grades, and so we don't know what the future holds, and so there could be some impact. So why is the process challenging? Well, it's challenging for a lot of reasons, and uh, schools or communities, that's probably number one. You know, these are places we come to where we know the staff, we know our neighbors, we know the classmates, and so they are part of our communities, and that makes it very difficult. We also sometimes have a history of attending a school, and so that's important as well. Um, we know families choose where they um, live, often for a certain school, so we know that. And we know when we change boundaries and we move families from one school to another that this disrupts the routines and that has an impact on your quality of life. And we understand that and we really do not take that lightly. Um, we do, um, probably another challenge is we haven't done this for a while in the Caney Creek feeder. So um, there's been a lot of probably consistency over the last several years. And as I showed you through the growth, um, we will be opening a school uh, in 21, and we'll be opening another elementary school in 2024 and 25. And so um, this is going to become more common in the Caney Creek feeder as we continue to experience growth and all those developments begin to come online. Uh, the future, we're going to be adding schools. And so we just, we know this is going to become more routine. Um, we also will likely have to impact many families to achieve our objectives through this process because what we're going to find and you'll see as we look work through the process that often it might mean we have to move some areas from one school to another and move schools from one school to another and kind of move a shift uh, down to make it work so um, that is probably one of the challenges in this process is it's just not an easy split uh, we do uh, as i mentioned we do anticipate opening another elementary in either 2024 or 2025 that was in the 2019 bond. So the funds are gonna be there. We know that um, we're gonna build it and there are other factors that will go into that timeline. And so it's not a certainty when it's gonna open, but there is another elementary coming to this area in this bond. And we know that we're gonna need it by about 2025 or 2026, as you saw in those projections. Um, we also anticipate that we will be repurposing cur the current Moorhead Junior High School back to an intermediate school when Moorhead Junior High School becomes, uh, is moved over to a larger campus. So we're gonna have a larger campus open in 2023. And at that time, uh, we anticipate that that campus will become the uh, second intermediate in the feeder and that will split Granger Lane at that time. And so that's why we wanted to include the intermediate uh, schools in the process because we won't be thinking about that. So that whatever we're doing, we, we wanna have given some thought to how it might work when we do split. So what are we trying to accomplish? What are the objectives in the process? Uh, we are trying to first develop an attendance boundary to populate uh, Reuben Hope Junior Elementary School while 
uh, while leaving some room there for growth because we know that area is going to continue to grow. We also want to provide crowding relief and future capacity to Austin, Creighton, and San Jacinto Elementary Schools. So those are certainly objectives that we want to do. Um, we are projected to have uh, 4,020 students in this Caney Creek Feeder Elementary in 2025 with a capacity of roughly 4,175 students when we open uh, Hope Elementary. So you can see in about 2025, we're gonna be full again. And um, so the eight year projection is roughly 4,815 students. So we know that with that new capacity of 4,175, we won't have enough room to make it. So we're gonna have to add another school in there. And that's where that second elementary in the next uh, three to five years comes in. So we have some basic goals for zoning. Uh, these act as a guide uh, during the district zoning process. We always want to be mindful of that we're, our goal is to provide the best education for all of our students. I want to assure you every child is precious and worthy and deserving of our highest and fullest considerations. And we understand that our committee understands that in this process. So we're going to be um, looking at it every which way. So another goal is certainly to draw the boundaries to support effective use of our facilities. <clears throat> this goes back to what we were sharing earlier about we don't want to have a school um, overflowing when we have another one that has room. And so that's where we have to do some shifting around and moving. And we do want to reduce crowding at, over, uh, at our campuses that are overcrowded. We do want to plan for the future. And I did share we have an elementary coming and an intermediate coming. Um, and we know growth's not going to stop. So you know, when we get out 10 years, there's even going to be some, some other decisions that will have to be made. Uh, we also want to communicate, and that's certainly uh, step one tonight. To do this process, we have formed a committee. It's made up of representatives from the schools that may be impacted. We have parents on the committee. We have staff principals. We have some district staff that offer um, some guidance in this process. Our transportation director is involved. We have representation from communication from our technology department as well. And um, so, so we do try to look at um, the process in terms of what makes sense, not only for zoning, but for bus routes and, and those kinds of things. And we do have an outstanding committee and they're, they're already hard at work. Uh, we have a lot of considerations. We, we give thought to the capacity. We give thought to what input we get. Uh, we look at demographic factors. We look at feeder patterns and school history. We look at geographical proximity. You know, that's certainly something we want to look at. We prefer to keep people closer to the school. Um, we look at location of existing communities. Um, we try to minimize the impact if we can. That's going to be difficult in this particular uh, zoning process. We do look at the number of times an area has been zoned or rezoned recently, and uh, we certainly want to look at possible future schools. Right now, you know, I, I would anticipate that the next school that comes in will be in the 242 corridor, since there's uh, two major uh, developments that are coming in um, in that 1314, 242 area. So um, that's where I would anticipate the next one. The one beyond that, we don't know yet. It's um, you know, I think it's going to be in the next bond, so it's not funded in this bond issue, but my guess would be it's probably going to be north of 105 and east of the loop when we get to that campus, but it's going to be somewhere different, which will lead to other challenges. So you can kind of see uh, the future, or there could be another one needed in that 242 corridor, depending on how fast that develops. So again, that far out where we don't know, we don't, we don't generally make decisions that far out, but we're certainly looking at it and considering those options. So we're looking at a lot of those things, um, projected future enrollment and then transportation patterns. We're going to try to share throughout this process, and I do apologize for my boys going in and out. Uh, we will be um, having some other of these and we may schedule some additional meetings, so we'll get that out if we do through principals, uh, through newsletters and then also on our web page and so we'll, we'll certainly be trying to get the word out but uh, the main message tonight is that this process is beginning we really want to uh, make people aware of that and this will be recorded and be available so uh, it's for viewing we do not take <clears throat> the task of changing boundaries lightly we are committed to providing a quality education we want all of our schools to be outstanding um, and we have found in the past that 
you know, moving families and having them change schools is a difficult process, but we try to make it easier by, by welcoming, welcoming them to the new school and making sure it's a, an outstanding experience. Uh, and then from a timeline standpoint, working backwards, our goal is to uh, have a presentation and a recommendation to our board who makes the final decision um, in January. And, and then that starts another series of, of decisions that come in. So once we finish zoning, we get that recommendation, we'll around there, we'll start to pick a principal, we'll be working on, once we know who's gonna be there, we'll work on developing the name of the mascot and the, making decisions about the school colors. And um, you know, it starts a whole nother series of looking at how many students are moving from schools and how many teachers might move. And so um, there will be uh, an interesting, uh, we do have, um, a web page with a lot of information and I want to I want to if I can I'm going to stop I'm going to try to go to the web page and then come back to the presentation so I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and I'm going to bring up the web page and I'm going to start sharing again And so uh, this is the district webpage. I'm going to be live for a minute and just kind of walk you through uh, what, what you would see. Um, and so if you, you can see, there's a little icon over here with the ABC, kind of Independent School District ABC Committee. And if you clicked on that, it will take you to a page that just more or less outlines the process, shows the enrollment growth. There's some, some other resources over here. Our goals, some, this is a lot of the information there's some information here that's in Spanish. Um, this is a specific page to Hope Elementary process. And so if you click on that, it'll take you to that page. This is our committee membership. There's a, there is a website for Hope Elementary, um, but um, there's some Q and A's on there. There's not a lot of information yet because we're very early in the process. There's the, these are the webinar links there is a place to submit feedback. So and this is what it looks like. And so you can put in information and you submit it and that will go in and we will share that with our committee. So uh, we compile the feedback that we receive and share with our committee members. Um, and there's also a place you can uh, download or upload to us a map if you want to include that. Um, so if I'm scrolling down a little further, there is a thing called the zoning worksheet. There's also some maps. If you want to see the current elementary and intermediate maps, the high growth map that I showed earlier are also available online. The zoning worksheet is, a, is just that. It's an Excel worksheet. Um, we'll open it up and take a look. This is the PASA demographic study. That's the full report. It's a very rather lengthy report. So when you open it, make sure you understand that you'll have to go through it. It's probably over 350 pages. So, um, but it's very comprehensive and gives you all the information you might you might need. And you'll see there's some neighborhoods in there that, that are probably come in that we or developments that are coming in that aren't even updated. And that was uh, two years ago report. And there's some Q and A's, some questions and answers down here. So this is what the zoning worksheet looks like. See if it'll open for me. Let's slide it over. And by campus, it will have the planning units. These are what we use to plan with. And then it'll have the number of students that are kindergarten through fourth grade currently that live in those units. And those are pretty good numbers. So we use what's there currently. It generally um, works pretty well for us in terms of projecting. And the way you would want to do this, if you wanted to create a boundary and you had some ideas about who to move in, uh, you would just simply cut a section and you would put it over here if you want to paste it and it populates the new school and it deducts it from the previous school. And so you would want to save that and you can upload it to us or you can email it to us either way. Um, but that's very helpful. If you would name it when you save it, um, so um, we'll have that information. Um, we do look at those, and so um, would ask you that you do that. So that's kind of the web page. I'm going to close out the web page, which you can see there's just a lot of information there. We will continue to update throughout the process. 
if I get back to the presentation. These are just some screenshots that I just showed you. This was my backup plan if the technology did not work. So I'm going to fast forward through those. Um, and so now I want to get to the, uh, the the question and answer, try to go through some of these and may call on some of our other panelists to help answer, but I'll do my best. And and please feel free to jump in if I, um, to one of my panelists, if, if you feel like I gave out the wrong information. Uh, which grade levels will be impacted uh, right now? We know it's K through four, but we really believe all of our schools in the, the speeder have uh, pre-kindergarten programs. And so I think it's reasonable to expect the school will have pre-kindergarten as well. Um, will you be rezoning intermediate boundaries? No, but we will be looking at them as we do this process because um, in our, my hope and our hope is that as we work through it, we have a better idea of what we think the intermediate boundaries will be in a couple of years when we have to do this process. So we wanna be um, kind of set the table till we're ready to go. Um, what about special programs such as Title I, bilingual, special education? I mentioned pre-K already. Um, for the special programs, all of our schools in this area we anticipate will be title schools. Um, all of our schools currently are bilingual campuses. Depending on when it comes to special programs and, and special education is a good example, we have some special education programs and some services that are available on all campuses because a number of students receive those services. And we have some programs that have smaller enrollments. And so we may consolidate uh, from two or three campuses to make a program. So it depends on the program and there are many programs. So I really don't have a set answer, but I think the most general services in special education will be available on all campuses, more specialized, might be consolidated with another campus. Uh, bilingual, all of our schools in the Caney Creek feeder and, and including Patterson and the Conroe feeder all have bilingual programs. What, what would determine, I think, ultimately whether we have a program is the number of students enrolled. And so we have to have viable numbers to make a program. And if we didn't, we might have to combine two schools to make a program. So give an example, a few years ago, San Jacinto used, did not have a bilingual program until it grew large enough with an enrollment to sustain it, and then we open the program. So um, once we, when we add a new school, we'll be dividing enrollment at some schools. Some, some schools will shrink, could impact some programming. We'll have to take a look at it, but we really do not know the answer to that question until we finish the process. And what about current third graders finishing their last year? And so if they're currently in third grade, we generally as a practice as a school district allowed students to transfer if they want to finish their last year at their uh, prior campus. So if your child was gonna be transferred from, I'm gonna just use an example, from Austin to Creighton, um, and they were in third grade at Austin and you want them to finish at Austin, they can apply for a transfer. We've generally approved those with the understanding that we do not have bus service. So there would not be transportation available. You would have to be able to uh, transport your child to do that. And if they have a sibling, we get that question too, well, they have a, little brother in kinder, does it, could they go for a year or two? Yes. So they could stay while that student finishes the fourth grade um, year out and they would be able to stay too as a family. So you didn't have to go to two different schools during that process. And then, you know, I had a question, how likely is my neighbor going to be rezoned? And the answer to that is, I don't know. Uh, we, we don't know till we actually go through the process. Some, some neighborhoods are more obvious than others. And I use the example, I showed you the picture of the new school going into uh, Granger Pines neighborhood. It's probably safe to say that everybody in Granger Pines is gonna to go to the new school. So there's some that are gonna be more obvious than others. Um, you know, if it's right across the street, if it's right next door, we're gonna do everything we can to not move the, the very close proximity neighborhoods to a school. Um, but, but until we finish the process, we really don't know the answer about um, who will end up where. But we do try to look at proximity as we make those uh, decisions. And again, this is a process. So we have a committee and they're gonna take all this feedback that they receive. We're gonna look at numbers and numbers are gonna drive a lot of the discussion and maps will drive the discussion and we'll try to look at it and come up with recommendations. And so um, that is part of it. And that's what we'll receive next time. So the next time we do one of these, we're actually gonna show you 
some scenarios. And we may start putting up some of those scenarios earlier before that on the web page to get some feedback. Um, and so be, we'll, 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 let, we'll let people know, we'll do the schools, we'll communicate that when we're ready to start releasing some scenarios. So once we have those, we'll start um, showing some of those. Here's a few more questions that we've received. We live a half mile from our school. Will I be rezoned? Again, as I just answered that one, we're going to try to be careful about moving people that are real close to a school. Uh, so we really try to be mindful of that. But as I'm, it is going to be hard in that um, you might live halfway between Milam and uh, the new school, Hope Elementary. And um, so there's going to be some, there are going to be arbitrary decisions about boundaries. And so, you know, if, if one side of the road becomes one school or one side of the road becomes another, and when you live on that road, it's always going to be awkward because if you live off of a neighbor off that road, because right across the street, they might go to a different school. And that's very common throughout our school district. And as we get more density, that will happen more often. Um, I live very close to Milan and Hope, but I want to go to the new school. And can we choose to be enrolled there? And that's an interesting question. Uh, well, wait, you, if you're that close, you might want to wait and see. You might be um, zoned to attend the new school. Uh, if it didn't work out and you thought that's where you wanted to be, we always have a process for uh, inter-district transfers. And so you would have to apply for an intra-district transfer. And that there's rules about that. It's not a guarantee, but if there's space and there's some other qualifiers. And again, we do not provide transportation with transfers, but there is a process from any school that you could apply for a transfer. Um, the number one reason we deny transfers is space, you know, for crowded. Um, when we open the new school, if everything goes well, we should have room at a lot of schools. So that's how we'll know we did it right. Um, so I live, here's the reverse. I don't live anywhere near the new school and how likely is it that I could be rezoned? And I think, again, we don't know the answer until we, until we complete the process, but I, I would say just looking at the map and running through some basic scenarios, we've already started looking at some this morning that it, it's going to become obvious that we're going to have to do some shifting to achieve our objective. So um, there are going to be some communities that are going to get impacted but you're being moved not to go to the new school, but maybe you're being moved to go to another school because someone at that school is being moved to the new school. So um, there's going to be some dominoes that are going to fall, I think, to, to from a map standpoint, because it's going to be difficult to justify. And we're playing a map for the long term. Um, what makes sense in the long run? It might make sense to you now to drive, to have somebody drive through your neighborhood past the school to another school, but in the long run, it doesn't that doesn't make sense for uh, the community and looking at it as a whole. So uh, those are the kind of things that the committee will wrestle with. But again, until we complete the process, we don't know what that is, but we can anticipate, yes, there will be some of that. Um, will my bus travel time be improved by this new zoning? And that's a good question too. And, um, you know, I guess, again, we don't know until we finish it. My, my experience tells me that and my gut, my gut tells me that probably there'll be some that will end up with better ride times and we'll have some families that will end up with worse ride times as a result. So I don't think it will be a uniform, everybody's gonna be better off. I think there could be someone who gains five minutes to their ride and there could be somebody who loses 10 minutes to their ride. So um, it's just too early to, to really be able to answer that question. Uh, how likely is it that I am rezoned in the near future? Well, that's a good question. So. Um, I already shared earlier that we anticipate another school in this area in anywhere from 2024 to 25 or 26, but there will be another school and we will be back to do this when that time comes. So it could be uh, three years, four years from now, we're starting this process again. And I wouldn't I want that to be known that that is a uh, very likelihood and we will have to again look at it. And so we want to be mindful of that as we go through the process. We don't like to do a bunch of you know, rezoning and then move a family three years later. Um, we try to avoid that, but sometimes when, in, when an area is growing rapidly, we can't avoid it and, and it has happened before. So we do, but we will look at that. We want to be mindful of that. Uh, my child receives speech therapy if I am rezoned. Will she still receive those services? The answer is yes. So again, we're going to deliver services. Um, and if 
And if, and if depending on the service, if it's not available at that school, we'll have that child go to the school where we do have the services. But, but speech is a fairly uh, common service, and so it's available at all our campuses. You know, another question is, what, what is next? So you're telling me all this stuff, Chris, but what's next? And really what's next is the, is the scenario. So, so we're going to kind of move off of the, this, this part of the process is just kind of the announcement of we're starting. We're starting the process of we know we got a new school. We know where it's located. We know what we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve for Austin and Creighton and think about San Jack and Milam and fill up, put some students in, in hope. Um, we know we got hope opening next year. We know somebody's going to go there. We know we got to start drawing some boundaries. So we're working on it. Um, that part is happening. Our committee is going to meet the next uh, few weeks. Certainly by our next uh, November meeting, we will have some scenarios to review and show. We won't show all of them necessarily, but uh, we're going to start. And really, generally, our process is is we kind of brainstorming process where we get scenarios, and we'll start to dismiss some as no, we're not able to live with that. We generally don't bring forward scenarios that we can't support because we can't support them and we don't want to show it to you and then um, take it back. So uh, we may show some that we looked at but discounted or already have uh, taken out of circulation, but we definitely don't want to bring, um, give people the idea that we're going to, just because we came up with it, that it's actually going to happen. So we will develop scenarios and then we will discard scenarios. So that's the process. We will bring some of those back. We'll get some feedback on them. There will be some that you might like. There will be some you may not like. There might be two. There might be four. There might be five. I'm trying to bring you too many, um, but you will look at them and you will have an opinion about it. And so we want to share that with you. We we'll want to hear that opinion. Um, you know, I saw a question pop up earlier. Is there, are we going to get the vote on this? Is this a vote? And, and the answer is no, it's not a popularity vote. Um, one thing we've, we've learned through this process is, um, you know, it, Unfortunately, if we put it to a popular vote, most people will vote move somebody else, but don't move me. And, uh, and we know that that's really not possible to achieve our objectives. We're going to have to move students out of Austin to make room in Austin. We're going to have to move students out of Creighton to make Creighton smaller. And so we know we're going to at some point move students out of San Jacinto, and if not now, in the future. Um, and we know Milam is going to be very close to Hope, so we know Milam is going to get impacted as well. So we know certain things are going to happen, but no, it's not a popular vote, but it is a, uh, a process and it's an exercise. And so we have roughly 20 people working on this exercise and we want to consider your feedback. So it's, no, it's not a vote, but we do look at your feedback and we do want to hear what you have to say. So use that web page to submit it. It compiles it for us and then we can share that with our committee. So that's that's what's next. Um, keep moving. So our next meeting will be at scheduled is uh, Thursday, November 5th at six o'clock and the link is certainly available. Um, and again, we're going to look at some other ways to get out some information. And I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. Mr. McCord, are you seeing any questions there that you want to answer? No, sir, we're all good. I don't see any more questions. All right. Yeah, so before we wrap it up, um, anything that you want to add, Mr. McCord or Mr. Chavez or Dr. Phillips? I would just say, uh, you know, go to the web page and you can submit your feedback and thoughts there. Don't be bashful about questions and uh, we'll keep you updated along the way. And we're going to do what's right for kids and look forward to getting this done in a timely fashion. Thank you, sir. Dr. Phillips, anything you want to add? No questions. Thank you. Nothing to add. Mr. Chavez, anything you want to add? Maybe for the Spanish speakers that uh, we have uh, the, this information on the, on the portal, so I'm going to say it in Spanish. Esta información la tenemos en el portal de la, de la escuela, así que si tienen alguna pregunta, pueden dirigirse ahí. Gracias. All right, well, thank you. I want to thank everybody for taking some time out and joining us and hopefully you learned something about the process and um, can't thank you enough for participating. So have a great evening.